this is lab 10 on the dog specimen. So today we're looking at some of the um, items in the axilla or the armpit area. So the axilla is really just the space between the forelimb and the chest wall. So here would be the axilla, all of this space. And then we're also going to be entering the chest cavity today. So we'll go over that. Um, before we do that, I want to just point out the lateral thoracic, artery, vein, and nerve are all right here. So you're going to cut your pectoral muscles. So just like you did on the other side, right along the sternum, you're going to cut and then fold those back and open up that axilla so that you can get in there to see some of this stuff. And then just use your little scissors and just bluntly dissect and find those. So these are lateral, thoracic, artery, vein, and nerve all right there. And then you also have your axillary lymph node. If I can just reach in here, I'll pull it out a little bit. Right here. So there's your axillary lymph node. And the lateral thoracic artery tends to run right by that lymph node. So axillary lymph node right there. Okay. Then we're going to show you how to open the chest cavity. And so here on the left right side, I've already done it, and on the left side I'm going to do it on the video so you have an idea of how this is done. So you reflect your some of your abdominals. You're going to cut through rectus abdominis and then reflect that back. And then you're going to cut through some of your external abdominal oblique. I just cut through a little part of it. It tells you to reflect the whole thing, but I don't think that's necessary. So I just reflect the part that's on the rib cage. And you also are going to have to reflect your latissimus dorsi here a little bit, just enough to get it so you can open this chest wall. So then you're going to take um, a pair of pruners that look like this. We have several pairs available in lab. And you're going to take the pruners and you put them in at the end of the sternum. And you're going to cut from the end of the sternum all the way up through the first rib. So we'll show you that on the other side. And once you do that, then you will be able to kind of pull that chest wall a little bit, and then you're going to cut right in front of the diaphragm. So here you can see the diaphragm is here. And so you don't want to actually enter the abdominal cavity just yet, so you want to stay just in front of that and make a cut down towards the back. And then you take them and go inside the rib cage, and you use the pruners and just snip each individual rib as you go along inside the rib cage so it stays connected but you can open it like a little door. So we'll move to the other side and I will show you how to do that. So here on the left side we reflected the rectus abdominis and you've already reflected all of your other muscles so that's helpful. I'm just going to tip the dog up just a little bit. So I tend to go a little bit further than the book says away from the sternum and I go about two centimeters or so but I usually look for this cranial epigastric artery, which is this little guy right here, and I go just to the side of that. So then you're going to cut all the way up to the first rib. So there we made it all the way through. Then you'll kind of peel this open a little bit. And if you see this muscle right there that's still attached, this is the transversus thoracis. And you'll end up actually having to cut through that also. It's very thin, so very easy to cut through. Or it usually rips too. That's OK. You just cut through that. And now we're in the chest going to come and feel where the diaphragm is with your finger so that you're not cutting into the abdominal cavity. Then you take the snips again and just go right in front of the diaphragm. And just feel your way along, making sure you're not entering the abdominal cavity. And you'll have a lot of that happen. A lot of fluid will come out. And it's a little bit of a messy lab. Okay. Then you hold this open or have somebody help you hold it open, one of your lab partners. And you're going to go in 
and snip on the inside. So here, I'll just show you. But you're gonna move down here and put the snips down inside and then snip each one. So I will do that now. So just bear with me, this does take a minute. So. And on the dogs, you do need a little bit more force than on the cats. Cats tend to be able to do it with like a big scissors. Don't necessarily need the pruners. But on the dogs, you definitely need a little bit more oomph. getting there. So as you can see I have a little hole in my glove there. That happens on the ribs so just be careful they can get me really sharp when you cut them. So, thankfully it's just my glove and not my finger. Let's see, am I through the first rib? I think so. Okay. So then you just flap it open like that and then you'll be able to see inside the thoracic cavity. So now we'll point out a few of the structures on your list. We'll go on the other side where I have it a little more open and prepped. And we have that internal thoracic artery. So I like to start with the internal thoracic artery and it gives off the cranial epigastric that we saw coming out underneath the sternum here. So this is actually cranial epigastric at this point, but it actually comes from internal thoracic. So this is a name change on the artery. So you begin with internal thoracic, going right under the sternum, and then once you reach the end of the sternum and it comes out of the chest, then it's cranial epigastric. And then cranial epigastric runs along the deep face of rectus abdominis. And then it also gives off a cranial superficial epigastric. So if you see this little branch here, that will come out and supply some of the mammae and other superficial structures. So this is cranial superficial epigastric. This is cranial epigastric. And that comes from internal thoracic inside the chest. All right. So now we're going to look at some of the pleura inside the chest cavity, which is just the serous membrane linings of everything. So this should be pretty easy. You have pulmonary or visceral pleura, which is basically the shiny part you see covering the lungs themselves. And then you're going to have the parietal pleura, which parietal meaning wall. So it's everything else basically. So you're covering the wall here. This is actually costal parietal pleura because it's on the ribs, so costal. And then diaphragmatic parietal pleura would be covering the diaphragm. So that's there. And then you also have mediastinal pleura. So mediastinum is all of this area here. So this is mediastinum and it contains the heart and some of the great vessels and thymus and trachea and all those things that are running on the midline. So that's all in the mediastinum. So mediastinal pleura and then the mediastinal pleura also is the pericardial mediastinal pleura is a specific part of that pleura. So that is surrounding the heart. So mediastinal pericardial pleura. And then you have the plica vena cava. So that vena cava is here, elevated by my fingers. And plica vena cava is this loose part of connective tissue here, this pleura surrounding that vena cava. So that's plica vena cava. Okay. Then I believe we just have to look at the thymus. So in this dog, hold this. Thymus is this um, brownish, dark brown tissue. There may be a lot of it, there may be a little of it, there may be none of it. 
depending on, depending on the age of your dog, you may have some, you may not have any at all, but this is all thymus right here, this brown lobulated looking tissue, this thymus. And then on the caudal edge of the lung, let me move to the other side, we have the pulmonary ligament, so I'm going to pull the caudal lobe of the lung out here so that hopefully you can get a glimpse of that pulmonary ligament. So it's ripping just a little bit, but hopefully you can see the whitish tissue extending back from the root of the lung there. That's the pulmonary ligament. And that should be it on lab 10. A few extra terms for lab 10. On the inside of the chest wall, at the caudal aspect of each rib, you're looking for the intercostal nerves, so that's the white part here, so intercostal nerve. That'll be at the caudal edge of each rib. And then you also have the intercostal artery and vein here. And the arteries, you have dorsal intercostal artery, which is going to be up towards the dorsal part, so towards the back. And then you have ventral, which will be the ventral aspect. It's a regional term because they anastomose, and there's not actually separate pieces, it's, it all is continuous with each other. So dorsal towards the dorsal part and ventral towards the ventral part. And those are intercostal artery and intercostal nerve.